When you ingest alcohol, you are, yes, ingesting a poison, and that poison is converted into an even worse poison in your body. I think most people don't realize that, that being drunk is actually a poison-induced disruption in the way that your neural circuits work. Because of the structure of alcohol, it is what's called both water-soluble and fat-soluble. What that means is when you drink alcohol, it can pass into all the cells and tissues of your body. When you ingest ethanol, NAD and related biochemical pathways are involved in converting that ethanol into something called acetylaldehyde. It's broken down into acetylaldehyde. And if you thought ethanol was bad, acetylaldehyde is particularly bad. Acetylaldehyde is poison. It will kill cells. It damages and kills cells and it is indiscriminate as to which cells it damages and kills. And the body deals with that problem by using another component of the NAD biochemical pathway to convert acetylaldehyde into something called acetate. And that process of going from ethanol to acetylaldehyde to acetate does involve the production of a toxic molecule. If your body can't do this conversion of ethanol to acetylaldehyde to acetate fast enough, well, acetylaldehyde will build up in your body and cause more damage. And the place where it does that is within the liver. And cells within the liver are very good at this conversion process. But they are cells and they are exposed to the acetylaldehyde in the conversion process. And so cells within the liver really take a beating in the alcohol metabolism events. Now, the important thing to understand is that it is the poison, the acetylaldehyde itself, that leads to the effect of being inebriated or drunk. I think most people don't realize that, that being drunk is actually a poison-induced disruption in the way that your neural circuits work. What it's doing in all cases is it's consumed into the gut, right? Goes into the stomach. The liver immediately starts this conversion that we talked about before of ethanol to acetylaldehyde to acetate. And some amount of acetylaldehyde and acetate are making it into the brain. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. Most things, thankfully, can't pass across the blood-brain barrier, but alcohol, because it's water and fat soluble, just cruises right across this fence and into the milieu, the environment of the brain, which is made up of a couple different major cell types, neurons, nerve cells, and so-called glial cells, which are in between the nerve cells. So one of the first things that happens is that there's a slight, at least after the first drink or second drink, there's a slight suppression in the activity of neurons in the prefrontal cortex. This is an area of your neocortex that's involved in thinking and planning, and perhaps above all, in suppression of impulsive behavior. These areas of the prefrontal cortex normally are providing what's called top-down inhibition. They are releasing a neurotransmitter called GABA onto various parts of the brain. They're involved in impulsive motor behavior and thought patterns. And as you shut down the prefrontal cortex, that GABAergic suppression of impulses starts to be released. So people will say things that they want to say without so much forethought about what they're saying. Now, What's interesting is this is true in the short term, so after people have one or two, maybe three or four drinks, but it's also true that the more often that people drink, there are changes in the very circuits that underlie habitual and impulsive behavior. For the person that drinks, say, every Thursday night or every Friday night or goes out only on Saturdays but every Saturday, there's evidence that there are changes in the neural circuits of the brain that control habitual behavior and impulsive behavior and they are modified and strengthened in ways that make those people more habitual and more impulsive outside the times in which they are drinking. This is something that's not often talked about when discussing the effects of alcohol. I mean, we all know the effects of being drunk can be bad, but rarely do we hear about the changes in neural circuits from just one or two nights of regular drinking. Again, chronic drinking doesn't necessarily mean every day and every night. That person is going to experience a decrease in this top-down inhibition, so an increase in impulsivity and habitual behavior because the break on those behaviors has been removed while they're drinking, but also changes in the very neural circuits that allow habitual and impulsive behavior to occur more readily even when they're not drinking.